Well, back to create. In the last episode, I explored the area around us, raiding a few villagers, putting a raccoon on a villager's head, bred some cows, mined some andesite, and ended up at this village. Then I did a little bit of work off camera. I decided to do a little bit of mining. I found a few diamonds, stole some bookcases from these villagers to make an enchantment table, and enchanted a couple of diamond pickaxes. Then I went back to the mine, mined some iron, copper, and zinc, found an iron vein, and then built some storage drawers to put all of the cobble, deep slate, and tuff in. And then in this episode, I'm going to be getting deep to create building a new site office, an automatic wheat farm and an automatic kelp farm to provide dried kelp for belts and bone meal. Let's create. So now I've got even more stuff to carry, not to mention all of the stuff that's at the first village that we ransacked, and I still haven't looted this village or been up to that tower. Speaking of this village, I don't know how you've managed it, guys, but every single one of you seems to have man magically got into this pen. But first things first, rather than ransacking yet another village and having even more stuff to carry, I am going to go find us a forever home and our RGs, oh, and now it's started raiding. But I think I've got a good idea of where I want to go. Over on our mini-map, we've got a lovely sort of autumnal forest over here and round this sort of area there's a bit of a cliff so i'd like to go over here clear out as many trees as possible and start a new home so i went live on twitch.tv slash foxy no tail and headed out to our new area however it turned out i'd marked the wrong area on the map so after a little bit of wandering around i eventually found the area that i wanted to go to set up a little camp inside of the hill and went back to the village to gather my storage drawers which i then carried over one at a time at this point it was time to start deforesting a decent sized area around the camp and then heading back to the village to go swimming for kelp before i was rudely killed by a skeleton and fish. So welcome to our first area of operations. This is going to be where we've got a mine, a big workshop, somewhere to live, and some factories and things going on. We've cleared out a big area, and as a result, got an absolute ton of wood. I've also now got a bunch of kelp, which I'm now cooking, because we're going to need those for belts in the Create mod. And the first thing I want to do is make ourselves a little site office. So I guess I'm going to need a foundation and to figure out what blocks we're going to be using. I've got a lot of cobblestone and I've got a lot of deep slate and I've got a little bit of tough. With the tough, I can use the block cutting to create a whole bunch of these different types of blocks, but it doesn't show me anything like that for cobblestone or for cobbled deep slate. However, I'm hoping that with this mason table from the chipped mod, I'm going to be able to create some more stuff. However, it does seem like I've left all of my clay somewhere else, which isn't particularly helpful. And looking on the map, I'm not particularly close to any rivers or streams in order to find somewhere to get clay. So I guess I'm heading back to the beach once more to go and gather some jays and here we are back at the beach trying not to drown again as i get a little bit of this clay And with a few stacks of clay balls, I can now go shopping. Hello, sir. You know, they don't actually sell anything. There's all these shops in this little village, and it's amazing, but they're not actually selling anything. However, oh, I didn't mean to take your, your stay there. Oh, I wanted that. Yeah, there's a bunch of things I can get from here, which are going to be very useful to us. I don't really need cookies, but that ender pearl could be useful. Oh, oh that was a waste of a rocket. <gasps> Look, pickaxes. Oh, enchanted books. What's that one? Protection one. That armor stand's got diamond boots on as well. Okay, this is another one of these many armor stands in one armor stand thing. You've got a piece of quartz, I'll take it. Oh, and look, more clay. And a stone cutter, that's going to be very useful. Now, I'm not going to completely raid this village because, well, I don't really need to right now. That said, there's a zombie head there that I'm going to take. And there was a chest right in front of me with more bread in it. I need bread. But yes, I'm going to save raiding this village for later. And that's the same as that big tower that we found up there. I'm going to save that for later. Right now, I'm going to get back to our new location and get building. And there we go. I can now make the mason's table. Let's figure out, can I do anything good with this? If I put cobblestone in there, oh, I can get all of those different types of cobblestone, which look pretty good. I can't put deep slate in there or cobbled deep slate. I can put tough in there, though, and I can get some nice things from that. That said, obviously, with just the normal stone cutter, there is a bunch of the normal deep slate blocks that I can get. And with this carpenter's table, I can make, I guess, stuff out of wood. Wow, okay, so you can have different types of stripped wood in there, and I guess you can do similar things with planks. You can, wow, that's a whole bunch of good stuff. Another bunch of good things you can make are these framed blocks, which, yes, I'm going to have a bunch of these, please, including some of these framed slabs. Slabs. No, the frame trapdoors, which you make from frame slabs, which means I'm going to need a whole bunch of frame slabs. 
Jeez, you don't get many for your money in this one. But fortunately, I do have an absolutely extraordinary amount of wooden sticks. Wooden sticks? As in, no, wood and sticks. Which is basically everything you need to make these things. And these are great because effectively what you can do is put them down and then colour them in with a different type of block. Now, that seems a little bit pointless when you can just put down a normal block. But it means you can have slabs of pretty much anything, and trap doors of pretty much anything, as well as slopes and stairs and of pretty much anything, which is absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to use these variants of tough bricks in order to put down a foundation for our site office. And I think I'm going to put it just about on this hill somewhere. Well, weirdly, it looks like some of these blocks don't like to go with these frame stairs, which is a bit of a shame. So I guess we'll have to throw in something different instead. I finished off the foundation with some frame trap doors, which I then used variations of spruce logs on to decorate. After that, I wanted to build the office and I wanted it to look like a porter cabin. So I needed to pick the colors. I decided to smelt cobble into stone and then into smooth stone in the hopes that using that with the mason's workbench would give me the color closest to what I was looking for. I crafted a bunch of smooth stone variants and started to build the cabin using vertical frame slabs to keep the walls nice and thin. Then inside, I built the floor out of frame trap doors to keep it nice and thin and I made the roof with polished deep slate slabs using framed edge slabs in order to get it to meet up to the edges. The stone cutter then crafted some glass into frame glass which I could then use with frame trapdoor windows to give us some windows and also some roof lights as well. But then I needed a door and I wasn't really sure what kinds of spruce doors there were so I went back to the carpenter's workbench to check some out. After deciding on a door I then crafted a tinkering table in order to make variations of lanterns before going back to the carpenter's workbench in order to make some very variations of barrels so that I could decorate the outside of the cabin with the barrels, the lecterns and even some mangrove roots. And there we go, a basic little cabin slash office onto that foundation with some spruce stuff around the outside, mainly using the frame blocks, a few barrels and things like that and some lanterns for decoration. And I'm not overly happy with the colour of it, it's far too white. I use smooth stone through one of those tables to create those white slabs and it's, yeah, I need it needs to be more creamy really to be a proper cabin colour. And on the inside there really isn't much to write home about, there's a couple of skylights in the ceiling, a door and some windows. And that's literally it which means that I need to decorate and I need to change the colour of those walls, but I can't do that right now because I don't have access to many different types of blocks. But what I can do is pick all of this junk up and take it inside. Now, how could it be? And there we go. With a little bit of decoration, this thing's looking a whole lot nicer and a whole lot more usable. So, of course, I've carried in my storage drawers. I've got a whole bunch of cupboard space, tons and tons of cabinets. I've got my backpacks, a couple of furnaces, stone cutter, all of the usual useful tables and space for a little bit more and, of course, somewhere to put my bed which is fantastic. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about building some Create stuff. So I better get cracking on my latest Create contraption. Now with the Create mod, everything you build needs power and the easiest way of generating power early game is with water wheels and you can make small water wheels or big water wheels. These only need planks and shafts. And shafts are just made from andesite alloy, which is made from andesite and iron nuggets or andesite and zinc nuggets. And I've got a bunch of zinc and I've got a bunch of iron and I've got a whole bunch of wood but I don't have any andesite so realistically I need to go mining for andesite. Now I could just use my pickaxe and go dig somewhere out in the ground down there somewhere but I don't want to do that. I'd rather build some of these mechanical drills and some sort of contraption in order to get me into the ground and I'm probably going to need a little bit of andesite to get me going on that but I think we could probably get a little bit of the way there and if we're building automatic drills we're also going to need glue which comes from iron sheets, slime balls and iron nuggets. Now I was fortunate enough to find a couple of slimes but I don't have many slimes. But believe it or not it's possible to make slime from dough and lime dye. Dough you get from wheat flour which you get from basically crushing down wheat or milling wheat. And lime dye can come from a whole bunch of different things including grinding up flowers and well all sorts of stuff. So I think a slime farm should probably be our first port of call. So first I need to make iron sheets in order to make a whisk in order to make a mixer and then using the little bit of andesite I've got left I can make some andesite alloy in order to make a basin which needs to be driven by a cog which can then be used with my handle. So it's a little bit weird but that should work. So we now have a way of whisking lime dye and dough in order to create slime but I don't have any dough and I don't have any lime dye. 
Dough is wheat flour and a water bucket inside of the mixer, which we've got. Wheat flour comes from wheat that's either ground down or milled. Now, I just happen to have an extraordinary number of hay bales that we stole from all those villages, which of course turns into wheat. And also thanks to those villages, I have a millstone, which also requires a cog. Oh geez, I'm running out of space in here already. And putting that together and chucking in a whole bunch of wheat, I should be able to just spin that round for a little while and that's going to generate me, hopefully, after a while, there we go, some wheat flour. But this is really boring and irritating and a very slow way of doing things. It's also making me very hungry and it's not actually generating me any green dye. Oh, jeez. So let's automate it this part of the process with a mechanical harvester. Or two or three. Then I just need a mechanical bearing and these linear chassis, a handful of chests, some wheat seeds a hoe, some dirt, and some very early days super glue. And with a little bit of space outside, I should be able to make a nice little automatic wheat farm. So I've tilled some dirt, just planting a few wheat seeds, although this is going to be a problem. Let's just get rid of a few of these. The next thing I'm going to do in this little hole of water is put down this mechanical bearing. So if I put that, come on, there we go. And then, I just need these linear chassis and I attach those to this like that. Okay, these ones are in the wrong place. In fact, let's just move all of this. So if I bring some linear sh chassis along here like this, grab my harvesters, which I've now got three of, and stick those on there like that. Grab a little bit of glue and stick it on the back here like this. And then stick on a double chest like that. If I go underneath and attach a vertical gearbox there, oh no, it's not. Why is that sticky? That shouldn't be sticky. Did I put it upside down? I've put it upside down. What a moron. Let's try to get this the right way around. The sticky bit clearly needs to be at the top. Let's put that that way around. There we go. Then I need a vertical gearbox there, a bunch of shafts coming out this way, another vertical gearbox there, a shaft there, and then we'll stick a handle on top. And hopefully when I do this, I need to adjust this so that it's only placed when anchor destroyed. There we go. Now, when I spin this, there you go, you can see the harvester spinning, and that's going to harvest any fully grown wheat and put it straight into that chest. But of course, this is not automatic because I'm still here winding this handle. Jeez. In order to make this automatic, I'm going to need power. And for a tiny little thing like this, a very, very basic water wheel should hopefully do the job. I don't think we're going to need any more than that, to be honest with you. I don't think it requires a great deal of stress units in order to do this, and I don't think it needs to go particularly quickly. So now I'm going to smash all this to bits again. Get rid of that gearbox there. Dig out a little hole under here, and you look, I've got water pouring down from where my water was in my farm. How convenient. All we're going to do is pop a water wheel, I guess, there, and it's already spinning. And then if I put my vertical gearbox there, is it going to go around the right way? It isn't. <laughs> it's going to go the wrong way. Of course it is. Great. Okay. That's not a problem. All I got to do, geez, break my water wheel. I'm just going to stick it on the other side. And there it goes. It is going. And with a little bit of a fence around it and some lanterns, that thing looks a whole lot better and, well, a little bit more secure. No one's going to be pinching my farming stuff. So that's the little wheat problem solved, but that doesn't solve our flour problem. And I don't mean wheat flour. I mean, growing types of flowers, as in pretty flowers or sea pickles. I mean, sea pickles would be better, but any of these tulips would do. But in order to grow sea pickles or tulips or whatever, I'm going to need bone meal. And from what I can see, there's no simple way of making bone meal from other things other than composting. And there is something I very much need to compost, and that is kelp. And you might be thinking, you don't want to be composting kelp, you need it. And I do. I need a lot of it if I'm going to be making these mechanical belts in order to make lots of machines and things with the Create mod. But in order to get a lot of kelp, I'm going to need to farm a lot of kelp. So if I'm farming kelp, I might as well divert some off and make it into compost. I've got good ideas, peeps. But that means I need a kelp farm. And I don't know how to automate a kelp farm with Create mod. Well, I'll tell you what. I can't wait to figure it out. After a little bit of poking around in creative mode, I decided the best way to do this would be to build a gantry system. And in order to do that, I'd need a big area and a big foundation to build it on. So using pretty much all of my remaining tough blocks, I managed to build one, add some stairs to it, and then placed a large amount of dirt to grow the kelp on. I surrounded the dirt by vertical slab frames and used spruce log variants to decorate them, adding a raised platform at both ends for the gantry platform to rest on. I then filled it up with water and planted in the kelp. Before I could continue building though, I needed to go mining for andesite as I had absolutely none left and I needed that for all of the recipes for the create stuff. So I went deep down into the caves and was immediately attacked by lots of mobs. 
which of course resulted in me blowing up lots of creepers. I found absolutely tons of copper, lots of zinc, iron and even some gold. And on my travels I also discovered piles of azurine, ochram and a large limescale deposit. I even found a zombie spawner and a geode and filled my inventory with copper, iron and zinc several times. But no matter how much I searched, I could not find any andesite in sight, even in the deepest depths, although there were plenty of silverfish, which caused quite a problem. Eventually though, after dancing with the zombie family, I found Viridium with andesite running through it and gathered quite a few stacks in order to take that home. After getting it home and crafting a bunch of andesite alloy to make more create items, I pressed iron sheets until I nearly starved to death, which triggered a goal. So getting started on the gantry system, I placed a gantry shaft and gantry carriage on the side of the kelp farm with a linear chassis with some mechanical saws on the front and a barrel. I also glued on a portable storage interface to transfer the harvested kelp to an external system, and I tested this all working with a hand crank. Once I was happy that it was going to do what I needed it to do, I added a gear shift with some gearboxes and shafts to where the power source would be. Speaking of power sources, I needed to create one. So I built a small trough with some more tuff and poured water down one side, adding eight large water wheels with one small one to increase the overall speed without reducing the power. This was way over the top for what I needed for this farm, but I'm thinking that I can power a lot more things in this building in the future. Now all I needed to do was figure out how to get the gantry to switch directions when it reached the other end, and I realized I could use redstone contacts for that. So I glued one of those onto the machines and then had a bit of a headache trying to figure out how the redstone would all work. It didn't help that I didn't leave myself much space around the side, and it also doesn't help that the gantry carriage won't move if they've got a redstone signal going into them, so I needed to hide the redstone underneath the platform in order to stop it affecting the gantry carriage. Eventually, I solved it all using a powered latch, and figured out that with enough delay from repeaters I could finally get it all working. I added some gears to the water wheel output to increase its speed for the gantry, and then added the second portable storage interface to receive the items from the construction, and then I started work on the second floor. I decorated the second floor with spruce planks with some trapdoors in the middle that had holes in them so you could see down below. And I built two systems, one to cook the kelp using a mechanical fan and a campfire, and one to compost the kelp with a composter. My plan was to use tunnels to split the kelp in between both systems, however because I don't have any brass, it means for now I can only use one system or the other. I pressed on decorating around the machines and starting to build up the building structure with spruce logs, and for the main building materials I decided to craft up some cobble variant and started building the walls, but I wasn't happy with the colour, it was all just too bright. Needless to say though, the actual systems in place are all working and looking rather fantastic. The kelk is cooked using the mechanical fan and the campfire and goes straight into a chest and the composter works as well, although you don't get much compost for the small amount of kelp that comes through this thing. Overall, I'm really happy with how it's all gone and how it's laid out, but I'm not particularly happy with the shape of the building or the building blocks, so I need some more materials in order to give myself some more variety of what I can build with. And looking at the minimap, it looks like I've been AFK for about 50 in-game days, which is crazy while I've been editing this video. Now, in terms of building blocks, you might notice that the terrain generation... Oh my goodness, that's a lot of pillagers. Why are there... Why are there so many pillagers? Uh, uh, hello? Oh geez, um, ow. Uh, yeah, the terrain generation's weird, all of the granites on the top, oh jeez. <laughs> and the, the, there's no andesite in the day, all right, it comes in patches, it's really hard to find anything actually you can build with, so I need to do some lot of live stream where I go digging for, oh my god, jeez. <laughs> go away, I'm trying to record it, oh my god, god I'll despawn them. Why is there so many? They should despawn naturally, should they not? That's ridiculous. There must be about 50 of them. And they're still coming for me. Oh, jeez. Go away. Leave me alone. They've got really strong axes. Right. Oh, jeez. Note to self, do not go AFK for 50 in-game days because it makes all of the p pillagers... They're still there. Yeah. No, thank you. No, thank you. I haven't made myself any more armor either. I need more armor. Have they all despawned? Oh, good, the majority of them have despawned at least. Well, that's good news. 
Okay, so yeah, as I was saying, I need to get more building materials, but the building materials in this world are a little bit strange because, well, I don't know if it's the Create mod or one of the other mods I got on here, but it's all over the place. So I need to do a lot of mining off camera on a live stream. But before I do that, geez, let's see what I've got over these 50 in-game days. Not, not all that much wheat, as it turns out. Okay, and I've had the bone meal farm running because that's particularly slow. Have we got any bone meal? 47 pieces so that's not working is it something's broken did a pillager get stuck in it maybe i wasn't close enough i was just afk over there is that really not close enough there's loads of kelp coming through here now there's no way i wouldn't have had what maybe i wasn't close enough has this not been running yeah, there's a bunch of kelp in it, so I think it's maybe not been transferring it. Maybe you need to be relatively close to these things. Oh, what a waste of AFK time. Come here, llama. Jeez. 